All right, welcome to my channel. So the first thing that you need to know before you start watching my videos is the purpose of this channel is for education and entertainment, mostly education with some entertainment and uh, mostly for my students really. It's, a, it's an opportunity for me to showcase my algorithm and for my students to, to see it working and me to be able to talk about the trades and why I'm taking the trades and things like that. This is not a channel where I'll be showing you that I'm making millions of dollars. So family rules, you won't be seeing that. Some traders out there want to put their stuff out. I don't even know why they do that. Like, And social media in a public sphere, hey, look at me. I made 20000 today, 50000 today, you know, all that stuff. That will not happen on this channel. The most you'll see me making here is anywhere from 50 bucks to 1000 bucks in a day would be the most once we get to that level of scaling. And then I'll reset and we'll be looking at 50 bucks, and we'll be scaling back to, you know, 1000 a, a day or so. Um, and we'll just keep resetting that scaling. But family rules will not be showing you on this, uh, my social media, that I'm making tons of money. Second thing is I'm trading with Thinkorswim. That's my platform that you see here on the screen. So you got my two windows um, on futures trading. Same thing. It'll be Thinkorswim. Um, so you'll see that I trade futures and the equities market with these videos. I trade based off of my algorithm, the simple switch algorithm. And it's got different settings. Same algo, but different settings for futures market for equities market and different types of uh, trading. It's got different settings for it. So I'll be trading off of that. Links below if you're interested in learning more about the algo. All the education over there is free, um, as well as the trading log that you'll see. You can get the link below, which will give you that log. Um, so you can um, go over there and explore all that stuff. So when you're looking at my screen, okay, and when you're looking at my screen, you'll see these uh, the chart markups and you'll see yellow. Wherever I put yellow is an entry. So when it's yellow like this, it's the algo um, ideal entry and then you may see a yellow like this and that is where I actually got in and it'll be touching the candle that I got in on and then the location. Red are my stops, green are my targets. And then if you want to learn how the algo works so you can better understand what I'm doing when I'm doing my trades over at the link below. You can go over there and learn all about the algo. It's completely free for that whole education. It's free from, to learn about my trading plan, my strategy, everything that I teach about trading is free over there. Only thing that costs money is if you decided to buy the algo, then that would cost money. But you can apply a lot of the stuff that I teach over there, including my strategy and trading plan, to your own strategies and uh, and help maybe improve your game. So all that is definitely free. I don't charge for any of that education, uh, only the algo if that's something you decided to uh, add to your list. So then sometimes you'll see on here my, me doing experiments, um, which I'm going to try to do another one later on this year when I get a little more time. Um, but I love to do trading experiments. We blow up accounts, um, but we do it uh, in the purpose of education, showing you that certain trading techniques or strategies sometimes uh, just don't work. And uh, we, we play with some different concepts and uh, blow up accounts, real accounts, small accounts, but still real accounts. And you'll also see some small accounts as well. Like when we do offshore brokers and things like that. So, and then uh, of course, educational videos I'll be putting out as well. So there's a lot of different content here. So if you can give me the like, hit, hit the like button, that would help me a lot with the YouTube. And uh, if you subscribe and hit that bell icon, you can be notified whenever I upload uh, new content. And the last thing, but probably the most important thing is, trading is very risky. Do not place a trade based on what you see here or whatever I say. I'm not telling you what to do. Um, if it sounds like I'm telling you what to do, it's me just thinking out loud. And, you know, most traders will lose all of their money. I am strictly speculating. I do not have a crystal ball. So, you know, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. So please do not take financial advice from me. This is uh, strictly to talk about how I trade, to teach about how I do things and for your entertainment. All right. So now the legal stuff is out of the way. Let's get into today's trades. All right, good morning, everybody. It is April 26th, April 26th. So the way I start my day, usually I get up, do my thing, whatever, have breakfast, stuff like that. And then I jump in here about five minutes, five to 10 minutes before the market opens. And I kind of just do a quick little review. I look at my April, which is looking really good right now with um, $1,000 so far, even though we're not even trading that much. Um, then I come over and my day trading log, click on it. Make sure we're down to where we're going to be trading the 26th. Last week we did, you know, on the last day of last week, not too bad, 200 bucks. So the 26th is where we're at right now. So I know I'm going to probably have a couple of trades. So I'm going to go ahead and add insert and then control D. 
to carry the formulas. So and if we need more, we'll add more later. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to look at my scaling ladder and I'm at $150 right now. So I'm going to go to the calculator, make sure I got 150 up there in the, in the piece. And then I'm going to run over to back test blocks. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to go to CVS and I'm just going to look at the charts real quick and see where CVS kind of left off last week and see where it looks like it's opening today. So we're around 7650s. Fine. Leave it there. QCOM. Uh, we're in the 135, 36. Scrolling back over to today. Uh, 135. So QCOM. 135. And this will give me my accurate buying power for each one of these. Uh, TWRU, we don't trade anymore. Just going to delete it. APPS. We are at 100, or sorry, at 70. 74 71 roughly I'm gonna put 75 so I'd rather have it be more and then um, then to not have enough and think I have enough you know like if I, if this was 74 and I told me I can buy 1500 shares and then I put 1500 shares in and it was really 7450 I couldn't uh, couldn't afford it that would be a bummer so all right APPS is good nug where are we at nug we're at uh, 67 we'll put 6750 all right, cool. So now I got my um, all that's in there. So now I can have accurate buying power. That's how much I can afford max based on my account, which I would just right now I have a hundred thousand dollar buying power, but my account actually has a little bit more, one twelve roughly. Again, I'd rather go to the the bottom, the low end of it, and then um, and make sure I have enough. All right, cool. So now we're good on buying power. Then we go to back test blocks, and kind of see where we're at with some stuff. So QCOM. No reds in QCOM for a long time. It makes me nervous. We had some break-even days. We just had a break-even day, so today will either be a winner or a loser probably. It could be another break-even day, but usually it doesn't have too many of those. All right, so then um, APPS, simple switch. We had uh, no trades for the last couple days, but we did have a winner coming off a loser there, so we should be looking pretty good. APPS, CVS on a switch back. Uh, CVS. Looks like we had a, we're ending on a loser. Just making sure that that's accurate. So I'm going to double check by scrolling back in my charts, and then I'll double check that that's accurate. And then because um, then that means I could probably scale. No, it's not accurate. So we just had a winner on a on CVS. So I haven't been trading a bunch. So I haven't been tracking this as much as I should. All right. So uh, CVS. So no super premium basically is what I'm looking for here. Um, super premium based on what I teach over on the course at, at the website link below. If you're interested in learning my strategy or how I build a trading plan or anything like that, all that education is free over at the link below at the site. Uh, I only charge for my algo if people want to buy the algo um, and for the trade log, which is what you're looking at uh, right now. So everything else is 100% uh, free over there right now. All right, cool. So Nug uh, coming off a winner. So no super premiums right now for, uh, for us. And um, so, yeah, so cool. So now I'm going to go over to my charts. All right, so here we are with uh, Nug on deck. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, s yeah, I'll leave it. See, up here, you can sp I can have two set up if I'm going to take two trades at one time so I can show you both trades. But I'm just going to leave it full for now. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So right now, Nug doesn't look like it's going to be presenting a trade anytime soon. Chances are the first thing that's going to present a trade to me will be um, QCOM. So I'm going to go ahead and throw, put QCOM up there. So QCOM's up. And uh, all right, so we're ready for the day. So basically, I just... Go through real quick. I only, you know, I trade the same tickers every day, so I don't have to use a scanner and spend two thousand dollars a year and scanner rentals and all that other stuff. And it's a lot less stress in the morning. I can get up, come in, just same tickers every day, and uh, makes things a lot easier. So, all right, everybody, we'll see how this day uh, this day wraps up. Hopefully, we'll be a nice winner. All right, so we have APPS here switched. Um, we're looking at seventy five forty six to seventy four ninety nine, but really. Okay, now it's looking better. 75, 74, 53, 75, 20, 74. So roughly a dollar. So we're going to put 150, 150, and actually we're going to do 100. The reason why I'm doing 100, I'm going to go a little bit light to give myself some room for, um, for my stop because I'm going to move my stop a little lower. All right. So we're in on APPS. We do have a big tower candle here, so a big retracement could happen. So I'm going to put my stop down here, 74.46. Get that in right now, 74.46. And I do want to speed bump that. 
So I'll put 200 shares in actually and do 7446. All right, so now I got my speed bump in. I'm going to mark it up. I went light because a big tower candle and I know support is going to be at low of day. So I wanted to be able to take advantage of that. So I went a little lighter on my share size. And uh, we'll see what happens here if we get another spike up through. Um, maybe we get a 2R out of it. All right, so looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and cancel my stop. Cancel 100 and then uh, 67 is what we want, but look at the spread. I'm not quite there yet. All right, so we're at uh, just pull back. The spread is opening and closing here right now. It's going to be a small little trade. I didn't um, didn't position my size right. I'll tell you about it in a second. Okay, so we lock in our um, our trade right now. The spread is what's opening and making this look go crazy. All right. So we're out with uh, $24 on that trade, much smaller than we uh, would have liked to have gotten on it. I didn't get out at 67 like I put my stop, ended up out at 51 So that's pretty big. That's like another 10 or $12 loss on that. Very spready. Here it's opening and closing big time. So what I should have done, if it even allowed me to based on what the spread was doing, was you know I, I didn't get in full size because I was worried about the risk on a tower candle and knowing that... Um, I was I wanted to put my stop down here. So when this pulled back is when I should have added to my position. I should have sized up, got my full size in, because then the risk would have been appropriate. I could have hit this target and got my full trade out of it, which would have been $150 because we're at $150 risk reward right now. But instead, I end up with a $24 profit on it. You know, it's it's still profit. It's green, but I'm missing out on a winner that I need to pay for losers. So now when I take $150 loser. Only $24 is paid for. So that's the downside, but at least it's a winner. So, Okay, so here we are with TWOU on the scalper algorithm. So I'm going to double check my uh, risk reward here 4137, uh, 4172, 41. So about a dollar. So we're going to go, we'll stick with 100 shares. Um, so basically, the way it works is once this algo trips, it tells me to scalp to the opposite. So right here we have a green triangle inside this uh, bar. So it's telling me to buy this long right now. APPS is also set up perfectly for a scalper right now, but I uh, won't be able to get it over there, I don't think. Let's see, I'm gonna try to get it on my other monitor so at least I can capture it. What's APPS, how much time do we got? Five seconds. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and buy and buy on APPS and on this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stops in and look look for my targets to get hit. So APPS is already on its way. I'll show you the chart later. So I got into APPS a bit heavy. Hopefully it will be a winner and not a loser this time around. Oops. I thought I was getting you with 100 shares, but I got in with 200. <laughs> so it is what it is. All right, so we're looking for a half or a full retracement of this candle. So let's get that correct. So APPS is a little bit green for me. I'm gonna go ahead and take 100 shares now. I wish I could show this to you right now, but I can't. But just tell you what I'm doing. I'm taking 100 shares. Uh, that's what I get for talking. I was gonna take 100 off the table because um, I bought more than I wanted to buy. It was in the green, so I might as well take that 100 into profit. But now I just went back in the red. So we'll see. Uh, we'll wait a few more minutes. All right. So here we are at the halfway point on TWOU dashboard. So I can see the spread's kind of big. But we pretty much hit our area. I'm going to go ahead and put my stop in at 45, 4005. Or oh, I was going to. I may have missed out on my opportunity. That's what happens. This is a scalping algo, so things happen fast. You got to be ready for it. And um, trying to talk on here, slow me down a little bit. Hopefully, it was a good thing. We'll see. Or I could just take my trade off the table. I should go at least break even. All right, so we'll go at least break even, uh, which we got about a twenty cents spread. So around, yeah. So we're, I mean, pretty much now we're at break even. Um. Right now we got seven buyers, five sellers. So let's see if this moves up a little bit again. Okay, there we go. 
on TWU. Push back through there one more time. I'm ready for you now. Let's go. I took my stop out, which is dangerous because you could have a big drop like that. So I probably should not do that. Let's just go ahead and put a stop in here just in case because it can definitely drop fast. All right, I think I'm going to just sell my position here. This candle is going to be closing soon. Let's see what happens here. I got about a, two minutes at the one minute mark left. I'll see where it's at and then I'll just bounce. Take what it gives me, flatten it out. I missed my target because um, I was a little bit slow on the button, but um, at least uh, we'll have profit. We got uh, 30 seconds. I don't want to be in the last minute because uh, this could retrace back down. It could go the other direction. A lot of stuff can happen as the candle's getting ready to close here. And it could boost, but, you know, a lot of times it leaves tails like this, and I don't want to be a part of it. So 35 bucks is 35 bucks. 20 seconds. If it boosts through here nicely, then I'll trail a stop like I like to do, but if not, I'll just flatten. All right, we got six seconds. Spread's tightened up a little bit. All right, we'll, we'll trail it up. Move it up to six. There we go. So now we'll either uh, get lucky and it'll boost or it'll pull back and we'll get out and see what our profit is. Okay, so we're back through the target now. So I'm going to move my stop up. All right, so you saw the trade. I was on the phone, so I couldn't uh, talk about it on TWOU. Um, right now we're in APPS. So right now we'll see how APPS plays out. I definitely way heavier than I wanted to be. I was looking for like a $50 hit and uh, way big on my size by accident. All right, so TWOU, we got our, our retracement as expected. A lot of times it'll do a full retracement, um, but you know I have to be able to, to get my stop in and then let it keep going. Um, but once it does this, then I'm out with half and I'm happy with that. It makes me money at the end of the year to do that. So now we're gonna look at APPS and see how APPS uh, shapes up here. Way heavy on size. So once this pulled back here, I was looking to, to pull my, sh my heaviness off um, in profit and then just leave what I had planned on having on there, but I didn't get to it fast enough. So um, here we are. So this is this is how you hurt your account because you know now if you get if you're looking for like $50 hits and you lose 400 bucks or 200 bucks, you know 200 bucks now you got to have four trades to make up for it plus losers that may be factored in it could take a while to dig yourself out of the hole when you make those kind of mistakes. So now we're looking at uh, on this, you know, this trade right now, I'm down 55 bucks. I could pull off my shares right now um, and just, you know, call it, you know, pull most of my shares off right now and, and it is what it is. And then if this does become a winner, basically I'd be break even. And then I'll say, you know, hey, that's what you get for making the mistake. You're, you're lucky to be break even, not down 200. So I could do that. Um, part of me wants to stay, right? Because I don't want to do that. I want to make money on this trade. I want to stay. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. And uh, it's a bit spready still. And uh, we'll see what we decide to do here. But right now it's looking very strong. This is very bullish right there. So uh, we'll uh, we'll hang out and see how this candle ends up closing. And then I may take off uh, part of my position um, and then let a little ride to either profit to break me even or stop out. Okay, so now we're um, just about back in profit. <laughs> as fast as it goes, it comes and goes away. Um, oh, just we were just about back in profit. Um, spread was the reason why we weren't actually in profit, um, but we're very close. Let's do it again, APPS. Come on. So I have 200 shares um, of APPS. This close was not great. Um, but uh, we have 100 in the order window because I plan to take 100 off right away. And then I'll probably scale out another 50 and then let the rest ride. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. So see how this, um, if I would have just took out my 100 here, 150 here, would have had a small loser with those shares. The rest could have broke me even. And with my TWOU scalper trade I just took, I had a winner on it. So that would have covered my day and I would basically still be a green day today. But because I stayed with this, um, I'm risking a, a pretty big red day and definitely a huge setback on the scalper algo scaling. So why do it? Because from, uh, from it hasn't stopped out for one. It's not a dead trade. It's still a live trade. Still a good trade. Still a high probability that I'm going to hit this target. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of emotions of uh, wanting to, to be, you know, a full green trade. So and then not uh, and not, you know, maybe not thinking smartly saying, you know what, there'll be more trades coming. I should just take this, uh, take this off 
and uh, is what it is. Wait for the next trade. I made a mistake. Um, pull my shares out, protect my account, and wait for the next trade. But believe it or not, it's really hard to do that. It's really hard to say, you know what, I'm going to accept less than when this is still potential. Like if it's hitting the stop, it's easy for me to get out. But when this is still a solid trade, like it's still a good setup, it's still most likely will be a winner. It's hard to say, you know what, I'm going to take a loser on a winning trade to protect my account because if it is a losing trade, then uh, it could be really bad when it's a winning setup. So it's pretty hard to um, to swallow that and give up a winning setup just because I made a mistake. So I think that's the, uh, the hardest part um, when you're trading is being able to have the discipline to be able to do that. And then when you don't, sometimes you get punished. And then other times you look at it and you're like, well, am I just being afraid of losing my money? So I'm going to get out of a winning trade because I'm afraid. So, and why are you afraid? Because you have too much share size for the, for the risk, right? So you're risking more than you're, you're clearly comfortable with. So it's not that the trade is bad. It's just that your risk is more than what you're comfortable with. So the right thing is to take off some of that, call it a day, be, you know, say, say this is a losing trade or whatever it is. And uh, next time manage your share size better, because if this was a losing trade, then it could be really bad for my account because then I have the psychological, then I have the psychological part of saying, man, now it's going to take me all these trades to get back. I don't want to wait five trades to get back where I was or six trades. I want it now. And then you start to make irrational decisions and then the snowball happens. And the next thing you know, you have this huge red day or red week because you allowed this one bad decision to snowball into a whole bunch of bad decisions. This is a clear example of how traders could easily um, blow up accounts because of emotional decisions, um, whether it be greed that got them there in the first place or a mistake. And then whatever it is psychologically for them that prevents them from fixing their mistake, whether it's they don't want a red day, they don't want to see losing. But then it, then you have to ask yourself, what is losing? So for me, losing is if you don't follow the rules, you're I'm losing. It's not a red day. Red day is not about winning or losing. It's following the rules is about winning or losing. So right now, like the rules are, this is where I get in. This is where I get out. Um, so by getting by taking a loss on this trade that's unnecessary, then in a sense I'm losing because I didn't follow the rules. But then again, I didn't follow the rules in the first place because I bought too much share size for what the plan was. So either way, it's like a losing trade for me. So. You know, if I would have ran through this process 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, uh, it would have been a lot easier for me to go ahead and sell my shares and just uh, call it a day. But because I didn't run through that process, that thought process until just now, um, I'm still in this trade and I'm about to take a much bigger loss. I was looking for a $50 risk reward and now it looks like it could be in the $200 range. So um, because I didn't run through that process. So that's something to think about traders like, when you're feeling that emotional pull is what I just did just now. Like, you know, talk to yourself and say, you know, why, why am I, why am I making these decisions? What is, and do that process. And that will help, you know, I think squash a little bit of the emotional feeling and kind of get you back on track and uh, thinking straight. So now that I'm thinking straight and I got myself back on track and you saw how I did that, um, I'm already, you know, way I'm, I'm basically, if I sell out, now, you know, I'm saving pennies, if you will. But the second I get an opportunity for this to pull back up and look at that same same opportunity I had before, which was around here, if it does it, if it gives it to me, I'm definitely going to bounce most of my shares out and then let the rest ride and maybe end up with a break-even trade. Um, or, you know, I end up with a big loser, and, and that's what I get for um, being an idiot, basically. So we'll see which one it allows me. Does it allow me to, to fix my mistake now that I ran through that um, that? mental exercise or is it going to punish me because I didn't run that mental exercise immediately when I realized I made the mistake. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. So there we go. So we took our $200 loss, um, huge loss on that trade, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, big setback, um, ran the mental game, felt like I got my head straight back in and uh but i didn't get a second chance so um i'll take that hit good thing we made a little money in twou to help the account for the day 
Um, and we'll see what happens with the regular normal day trading algo. Maybe we'll get a couple other trades in the, in the, for the day on that thing. That will make me some money and recover the day, at least have a green day. Um, and it's possible APPS gets me a couple more scalpers that we can um, also make some money on. So maybe we recover our day. We still got about an hour or so left. Um, and maybe not. We'll see what happens. All right. So here we got QCOMs wanting to switch. And I'm going to show you what happened with APPS. <laughs> All right. So uh, 138.35, uh, 138, something like that. 137.77. All right, we're going to short this thing in right now. All right, so QCOM, as we normally do, we just play the switch, and then we speed bump to green. So we're at 200, so we'll go to 400, put our stop in. Let's mark it up real quick. Making it break it. Probably should put my stop in just above high of day. We're so close to it. So 38.50, and it's a half dollar, so that'll also be a thing. So we'll go 50, 51 right there. No, nope, what happened? All right, we'll do it like that then. All right, cool. So we got our stop in just to make it break high of day. Okay, so why I, why I was setting this trade up, I'm gonna pull up back APPS up, which APPS set up another trade. Here we are. So yes, I got stopped out right here and this rally happened and I would have been in the green and out with profit and everything would have been great. I put my stop in the wrong place. But that's what the algo told me too, based on the numbers and probability, but you know, the statistical probability. So at the end of the year, I have the best possible outcome. So it is what it is. Um, got stopped out, rallied. See this red inside the green body, short. That's a short play. Right around here is a target. So we uh, potentially could have recovered a chunk of that loss, not all of it, um, but a chunk of it if we had traded that. So we'll uh, we'll come back later and see how this one um, how this one turned out. In the meantime, QCOM, come on QCOM, give me some money. Okay, so QCOM, we're looking for that short. We're a little light on the shares. We should have had. Um, I just put it in the calculator right now to to see what's up. And um, where are we actually? Yeah, so we're 258 shares. What we should have had. We're in right now with 200 shares. So I already got my stop in. So I'm gonna move this to uh, my 200. If it were to pull back again, I would add the additional 58 shares, but um, for now we'll just hang out. Okay, so we're starting to get this uh, retracement back up here. So 58 shares when I was short. I'll just round it to 60. Enter, and then um, Yep. Okay, cool. Look at the spread. It's 86, 88. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my um, my additional shares in below so that it has to back up to get those shares is what the plan is. If it pulls up, gets me back to the top of this candle here, it'll be great. Um, all right. Oh, I got to cancel. Let me cancel this other order real quick. Cancel. All right, there we go. So now if it backs up, I will end up uh, adding this the additional 60 shares to my position. And I'll trail it up so I can get the best price, basically. So we'll slowly trail this up. Okay, there we go. So now we're at 260. So then I'm going to come up here and put in 520. Enter. And then put my speed bump back in at 38.50. All right, there we go. So now I got my speed back, speed bump back in. We're good to go. So I'm going to bring this back down now to my share size so I don't forget. Enter. All right, cool. So now I got my 260 shares queued up ready. Um, if this goes in the right direction, I'll cancel this and put it in. If it goes the wrong direction, then I'm there for the speed bump and um, make our profit back on the way up. So to save time, now I'm going to go ahead and mark up this long play if it speed bumps. All right, so there we go. We got a uh, speed bump there. So we stopped out and then I reversed our position to 60. So I'm, I got to remind myself a speed bump is not to recover all of your money um, in most cases. But with QCOM, we do trade. Um, we trade the speed bumps to green. 
So we're in until we get stopped out down here. So we'll go ahead and put that stop in. This could be turning into one of those days, traders, except this stop out, I'll be just stopping out and calling it a day. So um, 137.71 down here. And you can see the line moving on the chart where my stop's going to be. So if we, uh, yeah, we break it. All right, so once we, if we break that, then we're out for the day. Call it a day. Take our beating and uh, and slowly recover over the next week or so. So, but uh, hopefully this will rally up nicely and we'll get our green uh, green on the day basically. And then I'll be looking to uh, trail a stop as soon as I'm green on the day here. So anyway, so that's how we trade uh, QCOM, right? It's a switch, speed bump till green, and we trail a stop and we get what we can get. All right, so we're finally getting close to the green zone. I don't want to get too excited because it could turn around from here and completely crash down and cost me thousands of dollars. <laughs> but we're getting close. We're getting close. And once we get there, we're going to go ahead and move our stops. I'm going to double check. Yes, 260, 260, 260. So we'll move our uh, stop wherever green is. We'll give it a little bit of room to breathe, and then we'll uh, let it sit and uh, see if we can squeeze some more out. Um, but we got to get to the green. Speed bump to green is the plan with um, the QCOM play. It's modified on the day trading strategy. So basically, when uh, if you're a student of mine and you're looking at a ticker and you find something else works better with that ticker than the normal day trading strategy, and you vet it and it's going to make you money at the end of the year, I say do it. You know what works is what's right, right? So I um, mean that's how I do. It. I got a couple tickers that I do some different stuff with just because vetting them for the normal day trading strategy. I discovered if I did things a little differently based on the algo. I would be more profitable. So um, that's that's what's happening right now. Although I'm, I'm in the red. <laughs> but at the end of the year, I'm more profitable this way. And if I didn't uh, screw up that other trade with APPS, today would be a green day already. So, you know, twice, you know, I didn't get enough share size in it or, or what I made at 150 on that trade, the first one. And then I screwed up the second one, risking, supposed to do a risk on 50 bucks. And I uh, ended up with $200. So totally screwing up today as far as um, proper share size and uh, positioning like that. Um, it had a not today be a nice green day already. But um, if this can close green for me, then at least, you know, our losing day would be a bit smaller. Okay, we're getting really close. I'm double checking the spread. Spread spread's really nice and tight. So it uh, looks like uh, 22, 3922 is where we want to be for green. So we're going to go ahead and um, take this off for now so I can quickly move my stop. So once we get a little bit above this, I'm going to go ahead and put my um, my stop in. we got three minutes for two minutes for this candle to close. So we got plenty of time for it to run up a little more. Um, and then hopefully we can get to put a stop in here at 39.22. Um, I'd like to do that when this gets to like 39.30 and then I'll give it some room to breathe. Hopefully that's also close to this candle closing. And then the next candle, when it pulls back a little, it doesn't stop us out and can continue upward is the goal, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we got it going to 26. So I want 30 on the bid. We got a little spread opening now, two cents, not a big deal. 30 on the bid is what we're looking for on the red cell down here, looking for 139.30. And then I'm going to put my stop in at 22. 23 actually, because this thing's been opening up two cent spread, one to two cent spread. Let's do it. So look at the candle spread here. 139.08, 139.74. So, you know, these candles right now on average, a bunch of them are between like 10 and 20 cent moves. Some are a little bigger. So I think giving this a 10 cent uh, breathing room should be plenty um, of space to let it breathe. So we're at 30. So really I need 33 if I want to go 23. So we're almost to 30. And this candle closes in a minute and a half. So... Might not get it because you know, a lot of candles like to leave these tails and these you know above and below. So if this is going to leave a tail, it needs to be much higher than 30 right now, so it can pull back to 30. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Okay, 32, 33. All right, good deal. So now I got my stop in. If I get stopped, at, if I get stopped out, all good. Um, at least we we're able to recover that trade on that speed bump, and um, and we're good to go. So. If, uh, if we can let this thing run, that'd be great. So what I'm, the way I'm going to exit now, because it's already, you know, basically hit the expected moves of the algo, the way I'm going to exit now is red and green candles. And um, if we can get a close and get moving, I'll be able to show you what that is and explain to you how I get out on red and green candles. 
Um, if not, then we'll just have to wait for the next opportunity, but um, hopefully we'll get that, that chance. So for this trade, I could take my trade off the table right now and make $62, a nice little profit, plus um, you know cuts big time into that loss I had earlier, which would be really nice. But I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna let it stay so I can try to show you the red and green candle exit. In order for it to work, though, I need to get a few more green candles in here. Um, if this turns red, retraces this, we'll just get stopped out for our break even, is what it is. But I'm gonna try to let this play out and see if we can um, get a red green uh, play for an exit. I'll show you. So the good thing is right now we're only down 65 bucks in the day. So if we can, uh, this thing can keep rolling. Uh, That'd be awesome. Another sixty-five dollars in there. So once it gets to like one seventy in the PL day, we'll be uh, green on the day overall. What a recovery if that happens. Okay, so we're getting a red candle starting to show up. So if this uh, works out, I'll be able to show you the red, red, red candle, green candle exit. You know, part of me is like, man, if you would have got out when it was one twenty-two, you'd only be down like thirty or forty bucks today. Easy to recover that in one trade tomorrow. Um, actually, I won't be here tomorrow or Wednesday. I'll be back on Thursday, Friday. But I really want to show you this red candle, green candle um, exit because it can be really profitable once you've hit your targets and you're squeezing more out. So I want to, since I'm already in my target, my stop's here, I want to give it a chance to play out. But at the same time, if this does click 160 or 170, I might move my stop to that area so I can at least have a green day on the calendar because uh, it would be nice to see green on the calendar, of course. Okay, we got 30 seconds left. So what's going to happen now is when this closes red, um, if it closes red below this uh, green candle, well, pretty much if it closes red here, my stop would normally go to the bottom of this, uh, to this green candle here, and that's where my stop would now be. Um, so you know, I'm not going to move my stop down there into the red zone, so we may just get stopped out here. But So this is going to close in 15 seconds, and then I'd move my stop. I'd take this candle, and I'd go all the way over to find the nearest green candle, and then i put my stop at the bottom of it. So, uh, but right now I'm not going to move my stop to the bottom of this. So hopefully we'll get some upward motion and, uh, and I'll be able to, um, you know, show you an actual stop out like that. Okay. So now we're closed. My stop should be down here at the bottom of this candle here. Let's just mark that real quick. Right here. Edit red. All right. That's where my stop should be, but I'm going to leave it here because I don't want to turn this into a red trade. Although it may be red by like a dollar, even if I get stopped out here. It depends how fast it goes through it. We'll see what happens. All right, we're still barely in this trade. But basically, I get a red candle that closes below a green candle. Move my stop over. Then we get a green candle. Red candle close below a green candle. Look over. That's the same candle. So we're still in the same zone. We'll see if this uh, stops us out. Or does this nice little retracement. And then rally, 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 rally. We'll see. We will see. So let me clarify real quick. So I get red below green, and then I move my stop to here. Now we got a green candle, but I don't change my stop again because we got another red below green. It gets here. So if I end up getting stopped out, I get stopped out. So it can only, my only, only move my stop up. I never move it back down, basically. So we'll see. If we get this candle, you know, gets up here green and we get some, you know, other stuff happening, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But I never move my stop down. So we established our first stop, um, really, which is down here below this candle. I don't even have it in the right spot um, because I don't want to take a loss in the day. But um, and I want to show you this at the same time. So um, I never. But yeah, so if my stop, if I had my stop in the right place, I, I wouldn't move it down. So is what I'm saying. I only move it forward as it allows me to advance. So hopefully we get some opportunities to show you what that looks like. All right, traders, that's going to do it for me today. So we will see you in the next trade.